What's up, Food Podcast? Happy New Year with Rodrigo Torres right here. Yeah, man. Happy New Year, everybody. How you guys doing? We have a guest, Joy Medina in the house. Hola, what's up, guys? Just joining us here. That's right. He's, mo he's working a new movie. I just saw him on Facebook. On location with five big-ass tanks. <laughs> Fool! I got some well, crazy-ass story right now. Tell me, though. It just came out. Fresh story. Do tell, Fresh. do tell. Remember we had the Incredible Hulk on the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, incredible, the guy that just was talking the Incredible Hulk on, on Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, his, what was his name? Joe McQueen. Joe McQueen. Fool. What happened, though? They jumped Superman. <laughs> Him and the other guys? No, Superman who hangs out at the uh, over um, there. Getting money. He, he got jumped. Yeah, Joe was telling a story on um, on Facebook that he got jumped and they fucking beat the shit of Superman and then he, and he knocked his teeth out. Oh. <laughs> so they had to use kryptonite. They just couldn't do it normally, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then they stole his Superman costume. <laughs> <laughs> it was a real Superman, dog. Civil yeah, War. and Civil War. Then later on, everybody was, <laughs> everybody was saying that this fool was a he always he was, he was hooked on meth. And all this and that. Probably and, uh, owed somebody money. Yeah, man. And somebody said, was that fool smoking kryptonite or what? Because <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of those guys get pushy and they've gotten into fights or altercations Dude, with people on the street. The craziest one is Batman. Yeah. What was that about? <laughs> Special news bulletin. What? No, was that? I don't know. Did that come through the live wire? Oh. Oh, no. What were we talking about? Uh, the <laughs> Hollywood... Uh, Superman ass beaten. Oh yeah, he got his ass beat right, You're and um, you want a microphone? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I can't hear you. <laughs> Tell me again. The Batman <clears throat> one was the craziest. Yeah, everybody confusing me. Now. Let's start all over. What's up, right. bro? <laughs> we got the manager over here, one ear. Rodrigo in this other ear. This guy over here. Hey, what do you want me to do? We got, we got Madonna, got Madonna over there. Hey. We got the engineer right here, fresh from a bad cold. Uh, don't forget about my new film, me. Eh? Oh, yeah, his, his new film. For the film coming out every week. I wish. Him and Dante. <laughs> Attack of the Killer Zombies. <laughs> What's up, fool? Anyways, um. What's up, fool? The, the Superman got beat up, right? They knocked his teeth out. Because the people were talking smack. And then Batman joined in. <laughs> to beat him up or get his no, ass beat too? to have his back. I'll fuck oh. you guys up talking all that shit, you know, on Facebook. <laughs> wow. But you guys don't know Batman, man. Uh -huh. If you have watched the, in, the documentary about them, it was about the Hulk, Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, and some other food that don't matter, man. But Batman is crazy. That fool talks about how he used to, he used to be an assassin for the mob. <laughs> oh, shut up. What the fuck? I spent it. Huh, Lisa? Uh, an assassin for the mob. And, um, you know, I, I, he talks about in a documentary. All in a Batman suit. I do some stuff that I'm not proud of. <laughs> yeah, like standing on Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, he looks like George Clooney, bro. Is That's he? that fool, the original yeah. Batman? All right, quick question. Is this the Superman that got his ass kicked, the guy from the documentary? Yes. Oh my The one with that little that swirl one? on his head. Yes. Older, the older looking. And yeah. who was his oh, um, He claimed that his mom was who? Sandy Dennis. Sandy. Sandy Dennis. Sandy Dennis is an actress. Out of towners. Okay, the out of towners. But that fool was like hard. If you see the documentary, he was hardcore like to the character. Like if he had to go smoke a cigarette, he'll go home because he don't want nobody to catch him smoking a cigarette because right, right. Superman doesn't smoke. That's right. But Superman does doesn't mad. get his ass kicked either and get his teeth knocked <laughs> That's out. That's what so. I'm saying, dog. <laughs> that sucks. That does suck. Because even if he gets his suit back, nobody wants to see him with chimuelos. Superman, bro. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Be walking up to him like this. Hold on. <laughs> Dude, Fucking he, super chompers. Eh? <laughs> no chompers, eh? But to get your teeth knocked out, Meanwhile, the Hall of Justice. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's the film I like. I'm not. I, I'm, Cape, dog. That's the film I would want to see because that's fuck. That's real. That's funny, dude. Yeah. All of these fucked up, you know, superheroes. No, there's been a film about about people who dress up in costume and, and have no more lives. Yeah. It's true. It's true. And, and but the thing is, this I don't mind these guys when they have. Like nice costumes, but like you ever see like the Spider Man is all skinny and they're saggy. The the suit is saggy on his oh, body. Got the uh, dog <laughs> bite in the leg. The Saturday <laughs> one, we were driving, we were driving and um, and fucking um, Lisa pointed out this sad ass Spider Man, bro. It's <laughs> probably the same one. <laughs> to the, the curved Spider Man. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, sh shabby ass knees. <laughs> yeah, red Reeboks. <laughs> A crutch. <laughs> oh, but Lisa, like in that movie, Kick Ass. 
Uh -huh. Those people are actually regular people who becomes who just do fight crime. Remember when in Denver we saw that black fool? Yeah, 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 dude. In, in Colorado, in Denver, uh -huh. real people like yourself, right. you know, they dress up like a make up their own. Um, you say Omega asshole man, right? Right, right. And they dress up with their own costume, with their actual weapons, and they walk around the whole streets fighting crime. Wow, that's because he had his own little outfit made up from like a cross between a different little handful of superheroes and shit. Yeah, it was like X Men mixed with um, Jaguar or something. Yeah, and then like Transformers. <laughs> and there was a chick with them too. Really? But these are actual superheroes that are fighting crime. The superhero we're talking about are asking for change. <laughs> <laughs> they're fighting poverty. <laughs> yeah, but they get hardcore. <laughs> like um, when we had the Incredible Hulk here, Joe McQueen, he knows the whole movie. We closed the show with him. He was doing dun 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 dun. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah the little original <laughs> Bill Bixby one. Yeah. Bling bling bling. bling. <laughs> he knows all that shit. It's like, dude, obsessed fool. I'm pretty. Um, I think Joe. They had an intervention on Facebook for Joe McQueen to quit acting and go back home. Well, he was posting some crazy shit, dog. Remember, like he was getting all suicidal and like, I don't know if I'm gonna live another day. Damn. Put him in your movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll definitely commit suicide then. <laughs> <laughs> be like, my career is even worse. What's going on? <laughs> Let me tell you, man. I'm like, like most actors, including myself, uh -huh. you put me in a set, there's a tank, I'm going to take 10 photos, so I'm going to be happy. <laughs> That's right. We Nowadays, we do things only for those shots. That's Without even doing it no more. Yeah, yeah, we just, want, yeah, we just want, we want the Instagram pictures. That's we get a we selfie. Eh? Yeah, once we're done, we're good. We leave fucking, we're done. And it's true, man. Like the, I was reading this article where like young people, I'm saying young people who are un under 22, they don't know how to hold a relationship like we're having a relationship just talking to you and right. I because they're used to all their friends being on Facebook or on Instagram. Gadgets so when they meet shit. a real friend and they, they get to know him, that guy becomes the biggest asshole <laughs> because everybody's an asshole if you, comp if you compare them to your friends on Facebook. Oh, hell yeah. But they don't have those interpersonal skills. Huh? That means in order for you to uh, no more, because everybody used to their likes, you know, they, they like hearing a little buzz like in a casino, you know, like ding, 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 ding. That makes everybody happy. Checking your likes, thousand likes, two hundred likes, two likes, whatever. It makes <laughs> you feel good. It makes you feel good that you get a like. You know, you're part of the social media world. Somebody likes you. But when you're in real life, people are quiet. They, they don't tell you, "Hey, I like you," over and over. <laughs> There's no right, like right. button. There's no you. like button. <laughs> you're, you're, How depressing would that be? Joy Medina every day, a thousand people give you a hug. Uh, yeah, that'd be yeah, that'd be fucked up. Like, stop, leave me alone. All right, got it. I'm good. Or whatever, you know what I mean? But okay, let's say let's say we weren't in show business. Let's say we weren't doing comedy. Would you guys be that heavy in social media? Hell yeah! Really? <laughs> I don't know, man. I would. I, 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 no, I think you I would. would. Cause you'd be excited, you would. dude. Cause every time we would see celebrities, you'd like call them out, dog. I like that. I'm, I'm a fucking like ah, maybe. Eh. But <laughs> this fool would. How about you, Joey? No. No, I don't think so, man. I think not even to get I, broads or nothing. No, it, I think it. I, I'll do it in the beginning, like I do everything, like I get into it, every every app, every social media, I get into it. Like, when it pops. Yeah, for like a week or two, and then I'm like, eh, I'm good. And and I only use now the ones that I have to use that everyone uses, you know, the communicate Twitter, the communicate and stuff. Your stuff but all the other shit, I'm fucking done, man. Like, you know, I, I got into Vine and, you know, that, I'm like, oh, fuck, seven second videos. I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. It was just, after a while, it just gets too much. I'm like, I have enough things to do. You know when you forget to masturbate because you're too much on social media, there's too much social fucking media. You know I don't forget it. Yeah, I don't go to rehab, dog. <laughs> I think I open up, when I'm on the road, I open up my laptop two point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, it, a, that's it's a repair. The, yeah, you're far unless, away. Unless I'm staying in the room with somebody. Yeah, yeah. I open up the, I open up the porn in the bathroom. Yeah, there you go. Cause, right, because he's a fucking gentleman. That's the way. <laughs> or I just curl the blackest over me like I used to. That's right. <laughs> Have a little clubhouse. <laughs> like back in the day. Dude, I remember one you day back, back in the old condo days when comics would be in the condo. I Joey would do jerk off have paper cuts. <laughs> no, dude, there was this, that there, was, a story, there was this dude jerking off. Ugh. It Another watching comic? porn, yeah, in the VCR, in the back in the VCR, yeah. It was a VC, he, he's watching it, and I'm fucking there, and he's fucking joking, and then he doesn't stop. I come in and he's just still jerking off. I'm like, all right, I just went to the room. I'm like, that's fucking rude. Should have challenged him, bro. <laughs> fucking rude to throw hot water on that fool, dog. The fuck no, out of here. It's so weird. Easy, man. man. What, was he a roommate or a comedian? He was a comedian. He was a comedian. Uh, I don't know if he, I don't remember. I think I think he was the opening act or something, but. <laughs> 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 he opened up that living room, dog. 
Yeah. That is crazy. That's fucking gross, dog. Yeah. That's we're going to put mine, dog. <laughs> yeah, but there's nobody else to put it into, dog, right there. <laughs> I know, like, some people are not, like, um, some comics, you could tell their career, not that their career is done, but um, they don't do social media as much, you know? Like, uh-huh. Willie... The more introverted. Rudy Moreno. <laughs> Everything, Rudy every, does everything's it. caps. Yeah. <laughs> Willie, actually, Willie, I see Willie on it more, a lot he, more. He started so, way more over yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah, because. Before he, it was all silent. Before he didn't do it. Because, you know, Willie's personality is different, but he, now he knows how to get his personality on social media. But yeah, Rudy doesn't. Rudy doesn't. Can't do headbutt Instagram, bro. Rudy still does flyers, man. That's he just, you know what I mean? <laughs> Rudy, Rudy still passes out flyers. <laughs> so right? so Come on, Rudy. <laughs> Nobody passes out flyers anymore. <laughs> Come on, Rudy. <laughs> Hit a mini list. <laughs> that was man when, we're, when I was coming over here, I saw this this pay, this ad right, and it had everything I used to do. I don't do no more. Like <laughs> oh, I was in the post office, <laughs> the post office, and it had like a, a little case where a bunch of like letters are in there. It's like in a it felt weird being there because the letter were in a metal case was glass next to stamps. And the letters that were written were from 1940, but even in 2017, they it, they look ancient now. Oh, yeah, they were yeah. like in this place case. Dear like Margaret. Scrolls. And um, <laughs> I was re- I was reading the letter right because a black woman to black woman, 1942. Okay. She said, and then her, her her words because this woman had just moved to Phoenix, right? From the south or what? From the south, from LA, I guess. Okay. And she moved to Phoenix. She was talking about her garden. But her, her, the way she, the way she said it was funny. She said, um, "They got me up here in the desert now." <laughs> <laughs> she brought some flavor to the English language, oh. dog. So in there, on the case, also they had stuff like a lot of stuff you used to do, Joy Medina. Uh oh, <laughs> um, send tapes. Oh yeah, <laughs> I there, was a, uh, there was a thing there to send tapes. All the reels were there. NPR, all of them. CD-ROM. You know how how all the cases. Through, uh, time yeah, technology. through time. And I remember Joy, Ma- Joy Medina was the first dude that had his, had his shit together. Like, you know, I used to hang out with Fluffy, you know, all those fools, but they didn't have structure as far as the business sense. Organizing shit. Organizing. Hell no. How many tapes did you send oh, a week? Dude. You were hustling, man. I'm hustling. You I'm were sending VHS You were the tapes. first guys to have a laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. I remember I bought it right when I moved to LA. So it was a hundred fucking years ago. But I used to have <laughs> I, used to have, I used to have empty I used to have empty cassettes, uh, VHS cassettes. Then I used to have the boxes to mail it in because they were a certain shape. And then I would have this machine that would just put the one video onto the other dub one. Dub them. Yeah, dub them really quick. And I would do that. And then I would always have like a personal message on the beginning of my before I do the stand up. I had one where I jumped off of remember that? I jumped <laughs> off. <laughs> what? Don't be laughing at that fool. I jumped it's funny, dude. I jumped off uh <laughs> Uh, I only did it once That's in my whole life. Of the, of the, yeah, of the, the opening of the thing was me at, at on a on a big tower with a bungee cord around me and going, look, if I could take a chance on this bungee cord, you could take a chance on me and book me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, dude. That, dude, shit, that, shit, worked. that, that shit worked. That shit worked. That shit worked. He used to break it through walls, eh? <laughs> Shut <laughs> up, fool. Dude, yeah, it was I'm going to break it through comedy. I used to do all kinds of crazy shit like that. I had, then I would have stuff. I would have me... Do it, like doing karaoke, but dress. It was, you know, you know those videos things. You would go in like with a friend at, at the at, at a, like six Barbara's flag. On. Yeah, and you would dress up like a character, and then you would sing a do song. Do a video. The video, yeah. I would put that on there. Like a road behind yeah, you. Yeah, like, like I always had a production. I had a production because I was fool, dog. Yeah. I figured, I figured I want these people to like p- be entertained. You know what I mean? And now I'm too fucking lazy to even pick up the phone to get a booking. But <laughs> yeah, I used to do all that shit when I first started. What was the wildest thing you did? Like, cause I remember. You would you would send the tapes, but you would send them to everybody. Yeah, yeah. You had like a list, like yeah. You, there you, was were a book. The, you were living at the post office. Yeah, yeah. Back <laughs> in the day, there was a book. There was a there was a because we was talked about it with no, Dante. Well, yeah, about the book, the, the book national stand up. Yeah, I don't know what the it was. One, I was fine, but it was a book where all the clubs were on there, all the bookers' names, everything, because there was no internet. And back you were sold too. Yeah, yeah the there, was no, there was colleges, no internet. Yeah, colleges, Maca. everybody. And the thing is, because it was a book and it came out once a year or whatever, sometimes those people weren't there anymore. So you had to be careful, you know, and all that stuff. Because it wasn't like the internet. You go right now, find out who books where. Right. It was it was a fucking book. And if you bought that book, that book was like the Bible for it comedy. It was expensive. Right? Yeah, and it was expensive, oh, too. Oh, more than $200. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that's the one that, I like, suppose, Deep Middletown was selling for three or whatever back in the day or something. <laughs> Probably, yeah. And Dante Deep Middletown was, was, was a hustler, man. He, was, he knew how to do that it. That book was called The National... Comedy. It was official book. then. It was official. Yeah, so yeah. it was no book. And they had like, like if you know, like it was. It had like um, the bookers for the 
the improv. They will tell you what number to call and who booked it. Okay. And then, like, I think it was, and then the improv. Then because I know one of the name was Jeff Jenna on one of. Them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He was a big the, uh, booker back then. You know? Irvine Improv. Irvine Improv. I did open mic with that. And a couple of um, Bob's Dainey gigs were oh, in wow. there, and. Um, and then they had agents too. They agents. had agents. They had management companies. They had production companies. They had all, anything in show business that hired talent. They had that there. Publicist, they had all that shit. Wow, dude. Man, I wish I could use that book right now. <laughs> I think you can find that on the internet now. <laughs> yeah, now it's just go on the internet. The only tape I ever sent to, I, I sent a, a VHS of me with an eight by ten, and I don't, I don't know who helped me write my bio, probably Joey, and um, I put it all together, and I sent them to um, Abrams in New York. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I sent it to them. They sent it back. <laughs> Did they even look they, at it? No, they, they, they sent it with a letter and said oh, like, okay. we went over it. You know, here's something we're not looking for right now, but they sent me they a responded. letter. I sent one to the Ice House too. Yeah, yeah, and Talene, whatever her name was, Eileen, I think. It was she Arlene. told me like this: We don't, you know, you're not ready to be headlining, you know. And she also said that, um, you know, you know, there's too much competition for the. Feature spots and we hire and we have our own openers, so that was it, dude. X'd out. Yeah, I got that same letter, dude. Got that same letter. I even sent a video and a letter to Saturday Night Live, dude. I Dear did. Lauren. <laughs> yeah, I did. I don't know, and of course, they. I never got no response back. But um, you were just at the Bumblebee, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I did sketch. I don't even know what guy. I did, but I'm like, I'll do whatever. Cause you never knew, man. It was taking a chance. Ah, fuck yeah. What's that? Talking about joy, but then I was his hustle, bro. Motherfucker never gave up. And what's up with that drive? Where'd you get it from? Boxing and shit or being a cop or what the fuck? No, I think being boxing. Yeah, because it's just that that every day I would wake up and go, okay, I got to do something else. I got to do something else. I got to do something else. And I still do it to this day, but I do it, I think, smarter and I do it, I do it less. Because before I was just throwing shit out everywhere. Just see whatever hits, you know, every lands. But now you got to be more precise because there's so much shit out there. There's so many comics out there. Or so so called comics out there, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not it's not the quality is completely different the way they used to be. Before you knew when somebody was good, they were good. Now people are headlining that I'm like, this guy's a head, this guy he he's got 15 minutes. What the fuck's he do with the rest of the time? You know what I mean? It's just stretchy. Yeah, and you're just like, well, you never know. <laughs> you know? Go long. <laughs> it is what it is. Tell us about. I know we, we didn't really get into it, but uh, you said we talk about. Uh, I told Rodrigo that you made a self defense tape. <laughs> a self defense tape. <laughs> Dude, I actually did. You That's are a true no story. longer gonna Dude, be were a going to be bro. <laughs> Shut up. No, 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 I didn't make a tape. I think. Belt. No, I think the what original I did was, Joey Karate. I think dog. I was gonna do a class or something. But this was years ago. This was back when I lived in uh, lived near Paramount. Cause I what I did was I saw another video and I'm like I can do better than that. Yes. That's what it was. And then <laughs> typo, and, dog. Yeah, and I think I was I was gonna form a class, but I don't think that happened. I don't remember. It was a long time ago, a real long time ago. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I did everything. I don't give a shit. <laughs> hey, Joey, when you were teaching That's that, up, when you were dude. teaching that um, comedy class, how many hardcore fools came in there, and, and you were like, "Come on, man." Well, okay, I I taught a I taught a couple classes, but it was like at the Ha Ha whatever comedy boot camp. Yeah, and it was, and I tried to really do it for free because I'm like I felt weird charging, but then there it was feels a, weird, huh? Yeah, so, it's like foot free advice that you can get from Larry Omaha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the thing what bothered Steven. me was this. Is I would have the comics go up there and do like three minutes, and then I would critique them. And I'm dude, I'm not a dick. I'm not like like you know, Jay not, Masada. Oh yeah, or like Willie hey, fool, you you should kill yourself. You know, I'm not like that. Guy. <laughs> Damn, like Willie's dog. too honest. You know, I'm more like I, I I always say it the nice way. And then this one fucking guy, he was like, oh uh, yeah, you're just a bitter. Uh, uh, oh, what? Not old because I was younger then, but it was like, you, you know, you're, you're bitter, uh, this and that. I'm like, nigga, I fucking, I forgot shit that you never even gonna learn, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you stupid fuck. Like that's when I'm like, fuck you, and I walked out. I'm like, I don't need to do this shit. What the fuck am I doing? You know what I mean? So I think next time I ever do anything like that again, I'm just gonna charge because then people are gonna be fucking. They, you know, they, they value they, to it. They value to it, and they, they, Quick, they want to be there. Not to step on you, but did anybody that you taught in that comedy class or critique? Do they are they still around? Um, Anybody Jerry make Garcia. it? Not that I remember. <laughs> Not that I remember. I really don't remember. I don't okay. think so. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, think we so. wouldn't know. I tell you right now, man. I was when I went to the walked into the Greg Dean comedy class. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen anybody in that class. <laughs> that was only one day, but everybody was there for the third class. Was walking around like they're like big time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. There's levels, man. If you're unfunny or a little bit funny, you're gonna get robbed by these comedy classes. 
Because, you know, break you down. There's right? a first one to teach you the basic comedy writing. That's all you need. Right. How to write jokes. Because if you can't, because you'll think about something funny and you know how to structure the joke. But then there's other place, another class that's there. Um, how to feature, how to headline, right, how right. to get booked, how to get in front of producers. One, two, three, four. That's $2,000 already. God yeah. damn. With that money, he's like, fuck, you could get a real job or do something real good with it. You know, it's like, it's, it's, <laughs> the thing is, it's people, there's all, the, there are too many classes for too many things. For people who really want to be a comic, I believe, take take a good class on, on how to write, and then that's it. And then watch comedy. That's what you got to do, watch comedy, because you never know what your style is going to be until a few years into it, really. You know what I mean? It's rare that somebody opens up the way they're going to be 20 years from now, because you develop as a person. You, develop, right. you learn how as to... As a comic yeah, as well. Yeah, you learn how to deliver the lines. You learn how to be more comfortable on stage, because every comic sounds like they're doing an act in the beginning. You know, especially, and, I, and I'm not saying this against female, but female comics, you can see it more. Like, they'll do that, hi, yeah, and they shake their head, like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm like, nobody talks <laughs> like that. Why are you shaking your head like, yeah, okay. Sex talks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I go, they, they're always new because they're not comfortable yet. They feel like they're doing a, a monologue instead of a conversation. You know what I mean? You always know, like, a young comic, when he opens up his relationship joke, like, where's all the couples? <laughs> yeah, you know, where the black the people, where the this people, where the that people, <laughs> you know, it's all cheerleaders. It, and black comics <laughs> will do that too. They'll go up on stage and they'll be like, "Yeah," they, they'll start posing, they'll laugh, they'll spin around in a circle. They do for four <laughs> minutes. They're doing all kinds of acrobats, and I'm like, "Well, dude, tell a joke, man." And they and, and they never got a regular name, hardly. You know what I mean? It's not or like talent. John Smith. It's always yeah. It's like Shucky Ducky or it's like, <laughs> Shucky you know Ducky. Br Black Casper or it's like weird <laughs> names like <laughs> Black Casper. Dude, these I'm like Judy Brown. Yeah, it's like come on, man. <laughs> just, 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 just tell some fucking jokes, dude. <laughs> you know? Or they do they do too much pandering with the DJ. Oh hell yeah! Come yeah, on, yeah. DJ, hit. Come like on, DJ. they try to DJ play my jam, and they play they start doing that. Like Remember, ladies. And they turn that shit up, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they blame when the DJ fucked up my intro. <laughs> no, motherfucker, you haven't seen a joke yet. And they'll play every... They're like, what are you fucking doing? An imperson, impersonation of Pandora, motherfucker? Just, <laughs> like, all, you, all they're doing is playing music and music. I've seen that, too. And it's just like, it's horrible. Because they're doing... I think in my mind, they're doing... To me, they're, it's all an act. They're trying to put this act out there. I'm like, don't do an act. Be funny. Be funny in a natural way. And then and when you're natural like that, dude, it, you can get away with anything. You really can you know what I mean? But it's just when you're doing some kind of fucking weird act. And then I feel bad. Like, I like to perform for everybody, right? But I, I'll feel bad when I go to, like, a regular room and there's mixed audience. And you see, like, a, a comic like that doing that kind of thing. Oh, I played this song. And you and I'm looking at the white people from out of town looking at each other like, what the fuck are we watching? Oh, you blank, know? huh? Yeah, this is, this is BET. Like, what the fuck am I watching? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that it's Welcome bad. Welcome to California. <laughs> but it's, they're just one. They got one. They got one level, one one, one dimension, thing, one dimension, it. and that's it. And you can't do that when you're a comic. You just can't. You know what I mean? Do you think it's got to be a dimension that everyone could yeah. enjoy? And do you think that's for l lack of having jokes, so they move around, and dance around? A oh lot? yeah, it's all just like fucking smoking mirrors. You know what I mean? I know, man. You can't show up to a regular show, man, with a, a different type of comedian and be dressed like Steve Harvey to do ten minutes. <laughs> 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 I, that's always tripped me out. I'm always full. Of, I can't be dressing up and shit. <laughs> what are you bomb, dog? No, I'm just part of people who you dress know, up hardcore, bro. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's always said, yeah, you gotta respect the stage. <laughs> Wait, have you, it, we're tortillas, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know what respects the stage more? It's fucking material, good material. That's what <laughs> respects point, the stage. Eh? It's not a fucking beauty contest, you know what I mean? It's a, I don't know. But it's, it's out there. What well, trips me out, man, like the people who are, like, it's different. Like, you know, we're, we're stand up comedians, you know? We perform on stage, you know? People pay t money for drinks to watch us make, tell people jokes. But then there's people on Instagram who have like a million followers, bro, just doing like one minute of silly stuff, yeah. right? And they, they, it always starts off like this. Meanwhile, <laughs> me, me at the club, right? But as a, and then me at the club, and then they're dancing, and then me an hour later, and they're like a different, same girl, different pose, throwing up somewhere, I messed up. Two hundred thousand likes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. They're watching a video or her tits. I don't. That, get I it. think it's a combination of both, or probably it. just the tits. I don't get it, right? And there's a lot of young people watching it, and they're um, she, she this person made a. I'm, I'm gonna be in Phoenix for a meet and greet, and everybody, wait, we're gonna go to North Carolina. We're gonna go yeah. here, and I'm like, I feel like I don't. I feel like answering. She's never going there. <laughs> <laughs> she is never going there. Then a lot of people don't know who she is. What the fuck you do? 
<laughs> for real bro, though. It goes, I don't, don't want to hate, but this girl's gonna sing and she's gonna do poetry. What the fuck is she gonna do at that meeting greet? You juggle. <laughs> that was me. I wrote that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, like if you if I if you could be funny like on Instagram and get a million of likes, you know, but but it's tough to transcend that into a. 30 minute show a full but on they ad. don't I just did a show in um, in Houston and I did it at this uh, place called Fitzsimmons I think it is or Fitzgerald Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald. Bar. Yeah, yeah they do well, have bands there and stuff. yeah bands it's, it's a big club for two for, stories oh, yeah two stories so I was there and it we, we did well it was a sold out show it's, it's not that big but it's a nice little venue and the guy bartender was telling me that earlier that day during the day it was sold out from a YouTube girl she said he said the tickets were a hundred bucks she went up there for about 20, 15 to 20 minutes and just read comments from her YouTube page. And that's all she did. And and people were paying. It was packed. She had big red lipstick? I don't know. I don't know who it was. Amanda, Amanda Knox? I don't remember who it was. Oh. But he told Amanda. me. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? He goes, yeah. And she sold tons of merch. And she didn't do anything but just read comments from her YouTube page. That's fucking crazy. That's dude. crazy, bro. That's a whole different level. That's a whole different level. Like that guy, uh, we had a guy when we, when we were at uh, Fort Lauderdale. There was a guy who came in on Sunday and did an 11 o'clock show. Sold out $100 a ticket. Uh -huh. And um, there was a meet and greet. He only did 20 minutes. The meet and greet lasted longer than the show. Holy fuck. And the, all the little white girls knew who he was. Uh -huh. A guy named Twains, who was Middle Eastern. Uh -huh. And he has like, he dresses up with a unicorn. A unicorn, and he has a little ho a wooden horse. And he just does goofy stuff, and the little girls go crazy. Fuck, I'm, I'm going to hate on him. I'm going to call Homeland Security on his ass. <laughs> and, and he sold, like, around $7,500 in merch. God damn. It's little little all this shit cost 35 bucks. And Hell yeah. And I, you, I was talking to one of the wait staff there. Yeah, man, the dads of these little girls were, like, with their head down. Like they, they don't understand what yeah. they're paying for. Right. Yeah, no shit. They're getting robbed, basically. In yeah, that's, of course they are. KC too. There was another one of those dudes in the day had those little sold out shows, because they can't sell drinks. All they do is sell food right, right. and sodas. But dude, we deliver so talent, brand. and it's just not talent. It's just not like a trick we learned yesterday. It's something we've been developing for years and years and years. And we we you know most of the time we land it, you know. But these little fuckers. I mean, God bless them. I wish I could do that shit too. You know what I mean? But but I don't know. I just don't get it either. I don't get it either. Do you think? Go ahead. Do you think it's going with technology, the way that everything's fast, short yeah, attention spans, like so. that's it, you can give it to them real fast and that's it? Nothing more, there's more um, kids watching it. You know, a lot of kids, like Isaac, who's um, 12. They don't know stand-up. They don't know stand-up. No, no, that's, no, that's a they great They don't know stand-up, but they know, this, they know this person is really, really funny. All tablet-oriented. But funny in a short way. Sometimes they're even not. I, there was this girl I was following. I only followed her because she was hot as fuck. <laughs> And, <laughs> Keep it real. But she's got a gazillion, you know. Salise something? In, yes, yes. That's the one I'm talking about. Oh, okay, yeah. Here she she doesn't right do nothing. This she don't do she, nothing. She just puts on red lipstick. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, she doesn't do anything. No, Salise Rose. Salise yes, Rose. Rose. And I, I was following her, and I'm like, this girl's hot, but she's... But I'm like, she really doesn't do it. She's not mean. She's not a jerk on there. But you could tell she's a little cocky. Like, yeah, that's me. Like, she'll do any... I'm buying... Okay, guys, I'm going to do a video tomorrow of me buying coffee. Make yeah. sure you watch. Want to like, be in my movie, Mija? <laughs> right. No, she don't need that shit. She's already, she's probably making millions of dollars doing nothing. Why, why does she got to work? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, she, she, she started off twerking. Oh, God. He goes, she'll do, she'll do a video like, um, he goes, me, me baking, me cooking, and she dresses up with the old, um, I get like a 1950s sexy, um, pinup uh, girl uh, style no, thing? Uh, you know, one of those stepper stepper wives. Oh apron. yeah, those those, uh, those things that squeeze yeah. your stomach in or whatever. Yeah, stepper yeah, wife apron, you know, to cook with her nice little hair, and then she goes like um, me cooking, right? And then it's all live with little la la. But in reality, then she puts on her pajamas and fucked up hair, and she starts dancing all crazy. Five hundred thousand likes. God I don't damn. fucking get, like. How does she do it? Like I what? Like I'll hire a hot bitch just to do that and get <laughs> you know what I mean and pay her. I think the, the thing is you have to be hot. Yeah, you of have course. to be hot. You Attractive, can't be an ugly dude. ass chick because I've seen <laughs> some comics try yeah. to do that and work, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's true being hot, but the thing, is, of her but the thing is this: it's not they're not even doing anything extra hot. But then I watch. <coughs> I've seen other girls. Dude. I've seen other girls though on there that are hot ish, but they they don't have that many followers either you know like and i've seen porn girls that 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 kind of show a little bit of something more 
but you know, not all everything. And I'm like, that's sexier than some fucking chick buying coffee. You know what I mean? But why does she only have four thousand likes? And for I'll die right now for four. I'll take the four thousand likes. But you know, I'll um. And this other bitch gets four hundred thousand likes because she bought coffee. Like I don't get it. Ah, yeah. good. I like that's probably right. And also, yeah, yeah. um, that um, one of the one of the things is um, what is it um, go on. No, I just think I, you know, it's like, and I sometimes I try to do that. I came up with a character, uh, you know, Grandpa Fred. Yes, yeah, Grandpa Fred, and I love him. And that that's that's like a twelve hundred dollar mask, dude. But it's funny. <laughs> it's, you got robbed, right, dog. <laughs> no, no, it's so we bad. had Dirty no, Grandma here that. last week. Oh, we brought you the Paula Bell, bro. Oh, yeah. she's Dirty Grandma. Oh, she does a th- character. Yeah. No, but she calls herself Dirty Grandma. Oh, okay, okay. But you got your hook up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> point of view sketch, Dirty Grandma. Hilarious. But it was very difficult for me to do uh, Grandpa Fred because it's not me at all. It's a complete different act. Yeah, it's a character. And, it's, and, and I feel awkward doing it. You know what I mean? Do now you I know what, 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 what joke they feel like when they're doing other people's jokes. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it feels awkward. But it's like, it, but, but it's, it looks so real and, it, and it's so authentic looking. I know I can do something with it. I just, I'm not sure what yet. What, how'd you come up with that? I just bought it. I bought the. I, 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 it's, a, it's a fifteen hundred dollar mask or twelve hundred dollar mask, but I bought it for five hundred on eBay. Oh, okay. And then I bought the six hundred dollar gloves, and then. Um, oh man, has. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do something with this. And I, and I just one day decided to do it in, uh, the Dirty at twelve thirty show. In yeah. Vegas. And yeah, and it killed, dude. I got two standing ovations, man, because they really thought it was a ninety year old man. Damn. Yeah, and and I go up there as a veteran, a World War II veteran. That's where it's at, though. If they don't know. You yeah, know yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that makes sense, dude. But you I just can't don't do pay that forever. <laughs> One time I actually opened for myself <laughs> at a show. I did Grandpa Fred, then there was a middle act, and then I came back and I did uh, I did me, is me. So that was cool. Like this right here is this white kid who put a big ass snail on his, his face. face. <laughs> it's a it's cargo, I guess, right? Right. 1.6 million views. <laughs> 3,008 3, comments. I'll give that shit a like. That's God no, damn. But I, I would like it too. <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> but it's no talent. But they're doing a meet and greet too. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Now he's messing man. with that big old albino alligator. Yeah. God damn. Meanwhile, Alfred Robles trying to get people to go to his show <laughs> <laughs> in Irvine, January 29th, Sunday. He's got a trick. He's got a he's January 29. He needs a snail. You got to get a snail, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing next to Fluffy. They didn't get two likes, bro. Oh anyway, Alfred God, Robles, dude. January 29th. Go check him out. Go check him out. You got a plug. Go check eh? him out, eh? <laughs> but yeah, man. See, that's a little plug. It helped Alfred, right? Right, right. But like like if, like if that chick would have put Alfred in the video, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't get two million. Maybe no. 100,000. <laughs> right, right, right. But still a lot. I think it's curiosity. What's you gonna do next, dog? You know what I mean? And, and you're seeing the porn stars only get four thousand likes, but the thing is, the porn stars on the internet already have like a thousand hours of footage. Yeah, you know, yeah, I already yeah. seen that. Right, you right. never seen what that girl looks like naked yet. Yeah, and you kind of wondering. Yeah, exactly. I think <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's all covering her head. Dude. But you know what I'm saying? It's like right, maybe right. the little element of surprise. But I mean, I mean, I ain't into it. But you know what I mean? Dude, but I don't. I I'm like how. Like what? Like, e- do they feel bad inside? Like, do they ever turn off their phone and go, "God damn, why do people like me? Like, I'm not doing anything." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, for some I, reason, I, I don't think they I'm do. I'm living do. in my mom's house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're still living in their mom's house. But and I think it's too. So the presentation is nice and clean. Opposed to when you do see a chick that's living at the mom's house with a Del Taco cup, a bong, <laughs> and then you know, dirty socks. And go, Ugh, dirty. Because Macho Rizzo does a video every day. <laughs> Yeah, but he's getting a lot of followers too. You know what I mean? He's more, he's more, he's famous on Instagram, but not famous doing stand up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's, that's why I'm doing all the stuff I'm doing. I'm trying to do movies and this and that because I'm like, I got to get more popular somehow. You well, know what I mean? Got to do something, bro. And do you think that that's the new way of doing stuff is feeding into entertainment, into co- comedians now? They're cutting their stuff up all nice and short just to put it out there because more people get it that way? But- yeah, and also long. Like, for instance, it's, it's just, and this is the same. Uh, today as it was years ago is is if you're popular really popular in one in you know in one type of media you'll be hopefully popular in, in another type of media you know what i mean so if you're doing but nowadays if be, back in the day if you were in a, in a hot movie you you should be awesome now being in a hot movie is nothing you got to be right. on, a, on a, a hit show not including all the media like if you're doing on something ma- major in media if you it's actually better to be on a a a video on YouTube who's got millions and millions of likes than to be in a f- television show in a movie. Right, because they're going to pick you out yeah, of there and, that's, to and put that's them on more, their movie to promote And more their people shit. watch it, and more people watch right. it. And then a lot of the stuff that these people on Instagram put up is not original. 
Oh no, oh, no all of this is shit. Oh, you've no, already no, heard of them, dude. No, no. Right here, shit watch. Here, here's the video. Here's the video right here. Watch. Yeah, that's a girl. I think girls are so complicated. We're, we're really not. It's like if I tell you I'm not mad, I'm mad. If I tell you I'm not hungry, know that I'm fucking starving. I'm gonna eat your soul right now. If I tell you to walk away and leave me alone, motherfucker, you better be chasing. Where's a paintball gun at? <laughs> 342,000 views. Holy Look, she has shit. her hand tattooed, though, too, though. All, like, the trendy stuff that's going on. And you know what I think a lot of these people do? Because I've seen it. Is you can tell these people who, who don't have talent, they'll watch comedians do a bit, and they'll they'll do that bit, but in their own words. Exactly. And which leads me to the point. Now it seems like it's almost okay to steal on the Internet with this new generation coming up because they'll do shit without... Because to them, it's not stealing. It's just borrowing. It's just like yeah, they they're don't know copying it's... something on the Internet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I'm not stealing if I'm not physically taking your wallet. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Oh, it's your joke. Like, I, I think my, you know my joke about the, coming in like a life raft? Yeah, yeah. Somebody made a meme with the actual, one of those inflatable beds. He goes, when you put on your pants and, and when you unbutton your pants and it was actually an inflatable bed. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's, see, that's what they do. People stealing shit. So when I do my next special, I'm going to do every good joke into a meme. <laughs> that's a good idea, though, dude. You should, dude. My next one-hour special will be um, 100 specials because I'm going to do one minute. <laughs> dude, I mean, to, that's the only way to salvage your shit so it doesn't get super jacked, dude. It's true, man. You just got to put out your there, shit dude. out there. But then I've seen, your hashtag. I've, I've seen people do my shit. All, all over the place, and I'll if I know them or I'll, I'll hit them up. I'll go so you know that's my Excuse shit. Excuse me, bro. <laughs> Neto, <laughs> no. Neto, Feto. Yeah, and other people, but it's like, <laughs> but it, yeah. you hit them up and you confront them. Yeah, but and, but, but you know it. Some, but I'm really honest. I got to look at myself. Go, okay, is it is it close to a joke that they could have come up with themselves? And then if it is, I just let them know that I have that joke as well. But I, I'm not going to mention the name. But there was a comic who did one of my bits on George Lopez show. And it was it, it was a joke that I could see maybe somebody else coming with, but it was word for word exactly the same. Exactly and then the you. thing was, he was there when I did that joke once at the Laugh Factory. So well, that's... I, so the thing is this: if I, if I see you at the Laugh Factory and I have a bit like that, as soon as you get off stage, I'm gonna go, "Hey, dude, you know that bit you have is a great funny. I have something really similar. This is the way it goes. Just so you know, I because you saw Damn. me there that night. Right. Damn, you know homie, I mean? you didn't let me feel good about my stare first. <laughs> <laughs> let, let it soak in, dog. You didn't let me get, uh, let me enjoy the moment, dog. <laughs> oh, dude. No, but you know, no, but because you gotta stop you know, him, Okay, he didn't, because if I leave and you, I don't say nothing, then you're gonna, and then you see me do it. You know, hey Joey, man, you were there at Laugh Factory when I did that bit. How come you didn't, you know, say anything? Right, right. So now you got one just like it. Does that happen yeah. a lot when you were living with comics? Yeah, not like, not you, so you, much. Were you afraid to say something funny? Cause man, this motherfucker will make it to a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, cause I think when when you when you're hanging out with comics, whoever comes up, whoever starts saying that funny thing, whatever it is first, that it's theirs, and then all the other comics start tagging it. You know what I mean? And giving you, I mean, you, I've only bought one joke my whole life, and that was from Felipe. Yeah, man. <laughs> the, crayon, the, crayon the crayon joke. joke. Yeah, it's the only joke I've ever bought my whole <laughs> fucking Black life. Black and it was because I think I had other stuff like it, so I'm like, oh, that's perfect. But um, yeah, that was that was the only joke I ever bought. But it was great. It was it was a great bit. You know what I mean. So it it worked. And 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 you know how it is. I've written jokes for other people that I'm like, it's not my style. It's not my thing. But it's perfect for them. You know what I mean. Or I'll have a joke that I wrote a while ago, but I've never really used it because it doesn't fit in anything I have. But I'll see somebody with something all of a sudden do something similar, and I go, hey, dude, there's this joke I wrote a long time ago. Why don't you add it? It's good. And if you do it, keep it. If not, let me know, and I'll just. Keep it back or Dude, whatever. thinking of <laughs> jokes, when I was leaving Louis the Thirteen yesterday, uh -huh. when I was going into Louis the Thirteen, this um, black fool always see go there, right? He goes to the dispensary, and he walked. He must have heard the podcast. He walked away doing your bit. Which bit? The scrotum joke. Which one? I talk about. We were talking about on the podcast that one time you had that bit about you bought these these boots made of leather scrotum. Oh yeah. That's and a, then when, that's we talked about bit. it in the last yeah, yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. The that one. guy goes. He goes, he tells me, he messed up the joke. Well, hey, when they get wet, they get hard. <laughs> you said that, <laughs> you said you have boots made of bull scrotum. Yeah, I forgot what that was. I forgot yeah, the bit, I have I boots that are made of bull scrotum. He goes, man, when they get hold, the shoe boots get tight. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm like I know. Well, it's, you know, good ball joke. What do you got to do? <laughs> but let's talk. Let's, all right, let's, we got, now we got to talk about, we got to talk about me. We got to talk about our El Matador. Uh, the oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> Twenty the, years. The release, bro. Yes, Starring yes, release. Gabriel Iglesias, Emilio Rivera, Paul Rodriguez, Ali Ramundo, Brad Williams. Yep. And uh, Felipe Spar. Brad Williams. Uh, yeah, he was in there. You'll see him a little. Sh it's a, not a little. He's in there for like two seconds. But hey, was there. that guy that was in the movie, in the in the movie, the old man was that um the the same dad from the Joe Lopez show? No. 
No. But he is Cuban, huh? No, he's Puerto Rican. And he was he's in a long actor, huh? Yeah, he's been doing that for I think I seen that for forever. In a episode of Beretta. Oh, he probably Damn. Yeah, he's been doing it forever. He, he was a parrot. He was in he was in uh, True Blood. He was the main Remember when they go oh, back in awesome, time dude. and they show the old vampires? He was the the lead vampire guy in True Blood. But uh he's a great guy, man. He just did me the favor and stuff. So anyway, when I did El Matador and you remember El Matador. Felipe, it was it was All-Star cast. Dog. Dude, it wasn't All-Star cast. That's fucking but, awesome. You couldn't get that shit together today? Oh no, not at all. But uh, busy and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I couldn't get it together there, you know, because it was just really hard. We, we did it with no money. We did it on film, not even video. And uh, it was hard to get everybody. And it was Film. And, and yeah, it was really my film school. Like, I look at it now, and, like, I don't show nobody that now because I'm like, oh, man, it's embarrassing. I'm so much, I'm a better filmmaker now. But it, but I watched it again the other day, and I'm like, you know what? Bad. It's funny. It's good, it's, bro. It's, 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 it's funny it's, as parts. You know it's what it is, funny bro? In a, it's in a, in a bad way. It's your Hollywood <laughs> shuffle movie, bro. That's right. <laughs> it's my Hollywood shuffle. I don't give a fuck. You know, you were doing things, bro, that nobody had the balls to do. Everybody wanted things to be done for them. Yeah. Like Willie Barcena, he was waiting for a movie deal. You know, Gabriel waiting. But he did get it. A matador. Right. You know, <laughs> I, even me, bro, I was, I was in a mentality of... um. They're supposed to give you a special, you know. They're supposed to give you this, You're but now Joy Medina will happen. Joy, I mean, Joy Medina will be driving by Clinton, you know, going to his pad, yeah, yeah. and watching those all those clubs right there by the fucking um, the nightclubs, the nightclub by Paramount. And Joy Medina was like, "Man, one thing I'm gonna be standing in line right there, <laughs> VIP dog, <laughs> That's right, the VIP line." Because when I first met Felipe, he would see he was excited about what. Of your movie going like, cause you were hitting them up, going, yeah, man. Well, yes. Today I wrote a page and a page in movie Dude, talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a like minute. This. That's a minute of dialogue, Felipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He started off with a little bit of paper like this, and he would write the dialogue. That's cool, and he'll, man. He'll, he'll, he'll like bugger. He brought wrote ten more pages. Now <laughs> <laughs> he was walking up to us like, um, like crazy guys, bro, from Orange and New Black. <laughs> when she was writing that script. You got any more of that? You got any more of that matador? <laughs> you, know, you know why I would do that? Uh, to be honest, to motivate myself. Because if I didn't tell nobody, I never. Then there was no pressure. Quit, on me. Huh? Yeah, there was no pressure on me to finish. If I told somebody I'm gonna do this, and and so now I told myself, fuck, I'm, I'm I gotta do it because I just told somebody I'm gonna do it. That embarrassment to fail, yeah. that fear. So I so I always push myself for that, and and I always do my. I always have a certain goal no matter what I did. I did that horror movie, that missing one, and I remember telling um, I remember telling somebody, I'm gonna win an award. I don't know what, but I'm going to win an award with this. And I did. I won five awards when it was done. I didn't know what it was. And I won Best Director. That was, that was the one I cared Best about. Best movie cut it, hey. I, I, didn't give a, <laughs> I didn't give a shit about the other stuff. But, you know, I did with stuff. And then, you know, then uh, I shot my sitcom pilot. And, and, and I told people it's going to get picked up. It's going to work. And it's going to look good enough to be on television at now. Not like a sizzle reel. Not like a practice. It's going to look fucking perfect. And, and it really, really does, man. I mean, it, now it's even tighter than ever because I work, because I, I had no money. So I have, all I have to do is work on it more and more and editing more and more. And I get different people to look at it and, and I get it tighter and tighter. And it looks like a real fucking show, man. That's one thing, you know, to, not to stop talking about his mother and mother's daughter. Not, not to hate on that little girl, uh, that girl that right. to least, her thing. But all her videos, you know, you got to give to this. All her videos, the quality is perfect. There's not a bad video that she put up. Sound. You know, Rizzo, please. <laughs> <laughs> but now in your shit. You know, is, you know why, Felipe? The, the reason is nowadays with iPhones and fo- you can't take a bad video. It's there. A little bit of lighting. It's it's they're fucking. <laughs> <great>. <laughs> it's cool. Show me an example. No, but of she's a bad using video. little techniques, probably like from lighting to sound yeah, yeah, and everything and that she makes has it look a crew, There's better. a crew there. Oh well, yeah, because she can afford it now. Yeah, you know, and I see that all the time. I see people on Craigslist. Hey, I'm look. We we we're we're a YouTube page. We need a writer. We need a director, camera person. Uh, what they need more is more talent. That's what the fuck they need. <laughs> you know what I mean? Need a but grip. Yeah, but it's uh, but it's really hard, honestly, now to be bad. You wrote your movie. Tell everybody here that you wrote your movie on an old school word processor. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> I wrote <laughs> this <laughs> instruments. <laughs> it's damn, true, man. dude. If you want to see one now, with you, you got to go to a museum to see one he now. Have to pl- he he couldn't even take it to a Starbucks, bro, because that came with a big-ass plug. <laughs> the, yeah. three, the, three the three, the three-plug plug. Yeah, the three-plug. I remember it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was white. And it, it had maybe it was a brother, huh? Yeah, Commodore I 64. Think so. It was a brother. And it was brother. Brother. And Damn. It, and if I wanted to erase Digital something, the front. if I wanted to erase something, I had to use whiteout. Like I have to go out and r- white out and then roll it back to the perfect line and then type over it. Like that's the way it was. It was like a typewriter. It's weird, except it was more digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little yeah. digital screen that you yes. start everything you wrote and then you decide to print it, huh? Yeah, and then you print it. But there was no saving, screen. though, right? No, no, no. Oh, my God. No, you yeah. just right there. It, it Process print, it into it, print. In it printed whatever it, print whatever you, it would see in that little screen. 
Wow, yeah. that's hardcore. Yeah, the yeah. next step up from the typewriter, dog. How yeah, did yeah. you um meet up with the guy that lived in Santa Monica or Torrance? The one I sold because they when I was working in a movie, like your producer, the guy was putting up the money. And, for El Matador? Yeah. Jason. Jason, Jason. Robacher. How'd yeah, you meet him? Well, Jason I knew from stand up. He was doing open mic before I even started doing stand up. And he was there was two open micers that were my friends, him and a guy named uh, Kelly Parks who lives in San Diego now. But everybody else People were hating. you never introduced us to. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing was, everybody else was a hater. You know when you go, oh, yeah. In, in, the, little, in the little open mic group. Even the people like, around you, bro. Oh, yeah, fuck that's yeah. Haters. Wait till you go on stage. You'll hear no ass. Right here with fucking... Uh, like I would, have, I, would, I, would, I would have, I would have, I would have my pad. Kane, dog. I would have my pad and, pa- and paper, and I'd be like, "Hey guys, hey, how about how you check out this new joke?" And they go, "Uh, uh-huh, it's a dick joke. Whatever. You're never gonna get anywhere with that." Yeah, right. You gotta start look. writing cleaner, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's I know. I gave that advice to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I should have kept it. But uh, no, yeah. But so Jason helped me out. Jason financed El Matador. You know, he financed El Matador with his credit cards. He Damn. was like, hey, let's do it. Let's make a movie. And then we just made it. We both learned so much on it, man. So I'm kind of glad it's it's out now. It's kind of like my my thing. And all you got, you can go to screeningnow.com and you can you can uh, stream it. Two ninety nine. Fuck yeah. Dude. Screeningnow.com. Screeningnow.com. The girl we were with at the time, she had broken up with her boyfriend and she had like three bo- three trash bags full of Spawn toys. Spawn. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I remember Spawn. Spawn was yeah. hot, yeah. dog, yeah. right? McFarlane <clears throat> toys. And she just put them in my house. And I remember um, I talked to Jason. I said, bro, do you like comic books? Do you run to dolls? He goes, I got three bags full, <clears throat> three trash bags full of Spawn toys. Uh-huh. Just give me whatever you want from them. Wrote a check right there for $350. Damn, you know what sucks 100%. That's why we didn't shoot the last scene, bro. We needed the money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we were there at the house. That was the scene where Marilyn Martinez was in the, in the Oh, bedroom. yeah, yeah. Oh, in her house. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Marilyn, God bless her. She's in the movie. Uh, everybody's Everybody that we know is in this movie. And people, Even Pops. Yeah, Pops was in it. And uh, the one person we don't speak of anymore, he was in it. Starts <laughs> with the letter E and it ends with not funny. We don't say bad words here. <laughs> yes. and, uh, <laughs> what is the movie about? You know, the, the movie is about... El Matador is about this kid <laughs> who comes from a long line of Matador families, right? Olé! In his family, there's an heirloom of a pair of bronze bull balls. Fucking heirloom, Rasa. So, uh, at one point, uh, the, the, the bad guy in the, in the movie called El Joto, and he has a little midget, looks just like him, called Mi, uh, Me Too, instead of Mini Me. <laughs> they steal the, the balls, so this guy be- wants to become a Matador to get the balls back. And that's kind of what the movie is about. It's just a stupid idea. And I got the m- idea for the movie from that song, El Matador. I just wanted to write something called El Matador because I love that. I go, I'm going to do a superhero Boom. who's a matador. There's this funny ass scene in the movie that was like a little um, take. Uh, he borrowed from Pulp Fiction. Oh, yeah, I do. I, where I, I fucking definitely... Christopher Walken comes in oh, yeah. and gives Bruce Willis a watch. As a little but kid. But this fool shows up. Like, <laughs> like, like Christopher Walken gives the fool the... Solid balls. <laughs> it is your birthright. No, no, no. It's a, it's a cuckoo clock. Remember? Cuckoo clock. <laughs> cuckoo <laughs> clock. <laughs> you know, every element of comedy yeah. fucking got stepped. So up. basically, yeah, I shot the <laughs> scene. Oh, the cuckoo clock. I shot the scene. It was a bird, dog. <laughs> bird, right? Cuckoo. <laughs> That's what it is. Damn, I shot that scene up. exactly like they shot the scene in Pulp Fiction. And the guy's giving the, the kid uh, the cuckoo clock. And he goes, your father, when he crossed the border, he shoved, up he shoved it. He, he knew is. those border patrolmen were going to take those. Uh, so he, he want stuck, those Yeah, so he goes, he shoved it up. He put it somewhere where he knew they wouldn't find it, up his ass. And every hour on the hour, a cuckoo would shoot out of your father's ass and go, cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> goes, Everybody crossing the border with him knew what time it was. It was always National Lampoon. It was dude, always you know. half past your father's <laughs> ass. <laughs> that was that, that, that <laughs> scene. There, there was another scene where <clears throat> everyone eating um, Gabriel Iglesias, Dean Austin, I think, or maybe another black guy who I think is Dean Austin, and they're all sitting down <laughs> with Reservoir Dog men in black suits, right? Yeah. Uh, and they're all talking. They're all talking, and nobody stops by. And hey, bro. His only line. Reservoir Dog, hey. Reservoir Dog. Then, yeah, so the, ne- the next scene, they're walking down in the alley, just like in the movie Reservoir Dogs. Because that was, you know, as a filmmaker, like you just, especially a movie like that, I wanted it to be spoofy. Like the, yeah, spoofy and Rodriguez, the movies that I admired. Joe Dina borrowed more than that show Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but it was straight out. And I even did a commercial. 
Do you remember? No. There's a scene. There's I, at the time I had a my own my first cross my, promotion. Yes, my <laughs> first my first uh, comedy CD, which was Below the Belt. Oh my god. Recorded live at the Fourth and B. Yes, right. That's right. So then, a little person punching the balls. Yes, yes. So then in the in the Cassettes, baby. in the movie, what the girl, the lead girl, comes out and she has flowers to give to the kid's mom, and he goes, "Hey, are those flowers for me? No, no, these are for your mom." She goes, "But I have something else for you." And then they both turn to the camera. She goes, "It's the Joey Medina comedy CD," and they do this whole <laughs> improvised <laughs> yes! thing over here, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled, I pulled, I pulled no punches, cool, man. Dog. I could do whatever I wanted on this film, but it was fun. It really was fun, but it was hard because nobody got paid. Nobody got paid on this movie. I it know because Joy Medina, like it's not. It was one thing about working with no money, and somebody said, "I gotta go." You really can't beg. Yeah, you can't beg. Come on, man. I'll give you more free. And you know what was hard was was Gabriel was wor was working a lot. He was getting booked a lot, so it was that schedule was hard. Then the little midget, he was uh, Marty, too. Marty Clever. He was he's he's still in a lot of films. Pirate. He was always working, always working, and he was one of the main guys. And I'm, and so I was always, you know, tell, shooting around it, and it was very difficult. Tell everybody what that actor drove. Marty Clever, he drove yeah. a, a big truck, right? Wasn't it that big ass truck? A four by four. Yeah, a four. The little, the little, the little yeah, he drove a big four by four on top, on big old tires, right? And then every time he would leave, everybody would stay quiet, just watch him, see how he gets in. Yeah. <laughs> how do you get in, dog? That foot throw a hook, bro. <laughs> 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 he's like Batman, right? <laughs> no, but he take, take a little step stool from the bottom of the truck. But the cool thing it. about him, he, he was proportioned perfect. Like he he wasn't he was like buff. he wasn't like Brad Williams kind of midgety. He was more like, you know, full. Yeah, he was buff and he, he was proportioned. No really big well. head. No, he didn't have a big head or a big butt. He was just muscular. He was on the Howard Stern show too. Yeah, yeah. Nice guy. He's he cool, right? He's, he's cool, really cool. cool. I haven't seen him in a, bit, in a while, but coolest dude, man. I love Marty. Really, everybody in that film honestly was was great, except that one person that we don't speak of. But everybody <laughs> was on that film, and, and everybody loaned their time and their energy to it, man. And it was it's fun. A beauty, it was, it was, it was a fun it. project to do, you know. The only thing I regret is regret missing the after the last scene. I heard it was a lot of fun. When you had that oh, yeah, party, yeah. Well, I, I wanted to you town. There. Everybody was dressed in drag for that. Even yeah. Gabriel. So Emilio Rivera is in drag. <laughs> you know, from Sunset Man Argy, he's in drag. I don't wear dresses, Holmes. Yeah, that, well, he said pretty much. But it was hilarious. So we, you know, and it was, it was, I learned more about filmmaking, making that movie than I learned about anything else. I Lessons to this day still, I still do because it's shit I learned shooting that film. To me, that was $15,000 of, of, of film school. You know what I mean? That's Why it took so long for the movie to come out now? No, no, it came out. It came out right away. It was um, on Netflix for about a week. Yeah, no, it's still in Netflix. You can get it on, on DVD on Netflix. But don't go to Netflix. I don't get paid for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I sold it to... What happened was um, I sold it to a company called Maverick Films. And um, we just broke that's even. That's Danny? Um, no, no, Danny. That's not Danny. This is a company out of Florida. And they, they basically broke even. We broke even. So that was good. And then... Um, I just wanted it out there, and it was so. I sold. I did a contract with them for over ten years. You but lost on the sellout, on the selling of it, right? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't make money at all. I didn't make money at all. Some I mean, you telling me, you know, Felipe just wanted out there. Yeah, yeah. I just everyone's already paid, you know. Yeah, and and, and that was it. And, you know, I worried about Jason because he's the one that financed everything. That was, much. A, that was your resume. Yeah, yeah. And so now there's a new company that came out called Screening Now. That's if if you're a filmmaker. Listen, and, people. And, and you want, and you want, and you ha you have no way to get your stuff out there. You know what I mean? This check these cats out. They're like the poor man's Netflix. So I I met them for for another project that I shot, and I said, hey, listen, man, I got the rights to this movie I shot, you know, a whole bunch of years ago, and you've got you know all these cats in it that are doing great now, and and he watched it, and I go, and I was making apologies. I'm like, dude, it's not as good as I you know my shit now, but he saw it. He goes, dude, it's funny. I like it. He goes, you know, yeah, let's do it. So we made a deal, you know. Um, uh, they didn't give me any money for it. It's a 50-50 split. So the, the it's a two two ninety five or two ninety nine to rent, not to rent, but to stream. And uh, after credit card charges, I get half of that. So hopefully now I can make some money. But still, and yet, like even Jason, I told him, I, I had a meeting with Jason the other night. I, go, I told him I'm I'm doing this, and I go, dude, you were there from the beginning. So whatever I make, you get half of that. And he's like, man, you didn't even have to tell me about that. I'm like, I know, but I'm not a dick, so that's why, because <laughs> I'm honest, you know. So, so, and, and my thing is this: I just want to see it out there, you know. I don't even, if it makes money, it doesn't it? Probably won't, but I just want people to see it and just have fun with it because there's all these cats that people recognize now from television and from films and everything Fuck yeah, dude. that they can watch in a in a in a 
in a 16 millimeter movie that was shot with no fucking money with bad lighting and it's hilarious it's bad you know when you watch something funny but it's bad it's kind of like that <laughs> you know what well, I mean? one of the scenes man you're standing right there but the shadow is the cameraman <laughs> <laughs> like, they're the old dolomite like, movies. like yeah. you're being chased by a crew <laughs> you see the microphone all dipping into the scene i oh, see yeah, a movie where the micro they forgot to take the microphone out oh yeah, yeah those old dolomite movies i seen also. real television 16 shows. candles <laughs> i saw the wedding scene one of my favorite sh sitcoms ever is uh, arrested development there was a scene one day where i see the fucking other cameraman standing there on the side i see him like i'm like holy shit how do you fuck how you mess that up you think they did it on purpose? I think no, also... because no, you could tell. You never know. Uh, speaking of seeing the cameraman, I think you see the cameraman in the movie Rocky 2. Really? Rocky 2. Oh, right. They're fighting, and there's a guy. You can see the cam... Because see, the, the, the guy was running with the camera. The first time somebody was moving with the camera. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ro the original Rocky was the first time they used a steady cam. Yeah. When, when he ran up the stairs, it's really? the first time in history steady cam was used. Dun, dun, yeah, the guy was running with the dun, camera. Dun, huh? Before dun. it was... Wow, so before film was standing still. Yeah, or you would need tracks. tracks. To move a camera, you would need a track. And now it's different. Like on my sitcom, I have this thing called a Ronin that I use. That Ronin. It's it's, uh, it's like a handle thing, but it has a a, a gyro, like a, like a gyroscope thing that you put the camera on. So no matter, no matter where you put move, how you move the handles, the camera always stays Smooth. steady. Right. Yeah, so it's kind of like a steady cam, same principle. So we use that on, on, on this show. But, you know, and then... Every trick I learn, dude, on shooting something, I learn it and I use it the next time. I use it the next time, and it becomes easier and easier. And I'm, I'm doing really well shooting with no money, man, because I'm learning how to do it. But I own all my equipment, my cameras, my lighting, my sound. I own everything. You're your own production Yeah, I own my own grip shit. I own, I own all of it. So I don't have to spend money renting something. You know how I mean? much do you spend on location spots for your movie? Well, on, for El Matador? Yeah. No matter, I really spend anything. <laughs> it was just, I, I did favors. Like, you know, the, the, the restaurant, uh, no, Noe Gonzalez. Oh, Noe Gonzalez. Noe! What's up, eh? You want to be in a movie? <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to use your fucking restaurant tomorrow at 10. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was on, it. Huh? Basically, if you want to be in the movie, then you had to contribute somehow. You know what I mean? Emilio contributed his car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Emilio, yeah that, that see, bomb. They remember the helicopter during, was there that whole fucking time because they were looking for somebody and we thought it was us. Oh, so you snatched it from that? Uh... No, what? The, uh, the helicopter scene? No, no, no. It's We, we shot, when we were shooting that scene out in the street. We're in a valley in Burbank. Yeah, there was a, there was a hel police helicopter, and we thought they were trying to look for us, so we were like, fuck, we got to keep shooting. And then what they were doing, they were looking for somebody. I guess somebody broke somebody's house. But the thing was, I had to do that that sound fucked me up because the whole scene is a fucking helicopter flying around. So we had to figure out how to how to clean the sound up. It was such it was so fucking difficult. Like I it bet. took me longer to edit that movie than it did to shoot the movie. Like it, it was much like it, no, it was probably about a year maybe editing that movie. And you did it on film, so you guys were cutting and spicing. No, we we did it on uh, we transferred the film over to video, and this was the old Avid machine, so it was still an old wow. process. Yeah, Damn. it was an old process. And these yeah, two, these two gay guys shot Avid is just another <laughs> editing system, you know. That's the one you see the film on it, and then you cut. No, no, because we we did we transferred the film. So oh. you take film and you put it into video formats, but the tapes are like this big. Oh, They're like, like old beta big tapes. Big old ones. Yeah. They give us a nice show. Yeah, yeah. It's like those, and then so they edit on those on those tapes. So it was very difficult. So you know it it's but it's uh, now things are so much different. I edit on my laptop at fucking Starbucks. Hey, Willie was not in that movie, huh? No, no, Willie was not in that. Did, movie. did you offer him a role? Probably, but he probably I don't know why didn't he do it. I don't know. I don't remember, but uh, yeah, there was no issue. I don't. Maybe I don't he was busy because Billy. Was, I mean, Willie was probably the most busiest comic out of yeah, all of was. us during that time. So he was probably never there. You know yeah, I know. I mean? oh, me, Benny Mena, and yeah, Benny Mena. Martin was Moreno was in it. Martin Moreno yeah. was in it as well. Uh, a whole bunch of cats were dude, almost everybody. I remember <laughs> that scene within the bus, bro. I was hungry, dog. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we got a, we got a bus. <laughs> You shot the scene in the bus. That was, that funny. was funny, man. It was so, it was a funny scene, man. If you guys watch the go watch the movie, rent it. Okay? Right, screeningnow.com. It's two ninety nine. Check out the scene now. in the bus. You're gonna die. The same people waving at the people leaving in the bus or the in the bus. In the bus. <laughs> we just I, I had people like put their heads down, wear a hat over their head. Oh my god, Because this is what happened when I that's shot some that. Good, that's some good no, no, shit. When though, I shot that smart, scene, I mean, you remember Felipe when I shot that scene. The extras in the bus, we got them from the Home Depot. We, I promised them $5 and a sandwich, right? <laughs> so we filled up the bus, but the cameraman that I had fucked up, and he put the wrong film in the camera. He put the film for daylight instead of the dark film. Oh, like, my God. So we had to redo the whole thing again. So what I did was I just got the crew and the people that were <laughs> doing other stuff. I put them in there. I go, look, just put your head down. You know, just go wear a hat. Like, do all this. And then I shot it from a lower 
perspective, so you really don't see too many faces for, for some of the shots. So that's kind of the way I, I that's shot That's cheating, it. bro. No, it's called <laughs> filmmaking, son. That's, that's what everybody does. bro. Did like in, in, uh, in that movie with uh, From Here to Eternity, right? Which one's that one? Oh, yeah, no, that, from here to return, the one, the one with Humphrey Bogart. Fall on damn planes and you came in here. Casablanca. Casablanca. And Casablanca, at the end of the scene, when um, it's supposed to be Humphrey Bogart and the French police, and they're under the airport, and his lover his lover is leaving, mm-hmm. That I found out that that's not really them standing, the little people. But they wanted to look like his far. Oh, yeah, they're the tricks, it, was, it, was a, it was a guy, a little person dressed like tricks. Humphrey Bogart, and another little person dressed like the French cop. And then when they're waving, it's just their voice is talking, but it's them right there. Damn. That's what they do. What's that Hobbit or the Hobbit? The, that's what that's <laughs> what, that's what they do. Like they'll if they want to show like somebody bigger than somebody, they'll sit them on the table, and it, on the camera it looks like they're sitting directly in front of each other, but actually one person is closer to the camera than the other, and then that what that gives you a, a, a perspective, a different perspective. So the person who's further away from the camera looks small, and the other one looks bigger, but. It, but on camera, because it's flat, it looks like they're right in front of each other. I know, man, when I saw Eddie Murphy for the first time, I said, God damn, Axel Foley, I thought you were 6'3". <laughs> little. <laughs> he is little, yeah, fool. Yeah, yeah. I'll knock that fool out. <laughs> no, <laughs> but he's small. Uh-huh. But in the movie, they just look you so look huge, large. Dog. The big, sc- what they call the big screen. screen. It's how yeah, you man. shoot stuff. It's angles. It's what it, you really can manipulate a look on on a camera, you know, or you know, on the screen any way you want. You just got to know what you're doing, and there's all kinds of tricks in filmmaking, dude, that look dope. Joy, learn all that stuff from watching magicians in Vegas. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. You said that guy had mirrors, right? Which one? When you were backstage at that guy's ma- the magician show, you told me one time Top you were backstage. You were backstage and you saw other guys' tricks. Well, yeah. Well, oh yeah, that's right. I did. I did uh, at the Monte Carlo. I forgot the magician there. He the way he does tricks. I mean, the way he does the tricks. I could see him, but because I was backstage, like it was a black night for him. So all his all his tricks were back there, and it was me and Paul Rodriguez were were performing at the Monte Carlo. So like there was this. There's a thing where he makes. uh, There's an empty like cage. And then he makes a car appear and then disappear. And they do that with mirrors. The car is always there. They just move the mirror inside. And then when they, the, the mirrors look like pointed up, it just looks like there's the place is blank. Black. Yeah, it's blank. Like there's nothing in there. It's called an illusion, right? Yeah, yeah, it's all illusion. It's all tricks. Illusion. Just like filmmaking, dude. <laughs> filmmaking is all tricks, man. It's just you manipulate the film or you manipulate the image to, to get an emotion or a reaction or to get a certain look or, you know what I mean? So it's... Uh, it's kind of like being a magician, but when you're making a movie, and it's it's fun, dude. It's fun as fuck. I love filmmaking so fucking much, you know. I just can't wait to make a living doing it. That would be <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> you do too bad. How many films have you directed already? I've directed a bunch of stuff. Um, music videos, little sketches, um, uh, shorts. You know, uh, and now that the last thing I directed was a sitcom. Oh, and and comedy specials. I directed uh, f- uh, like four comedy specials, so that was fun. You know, and then um, another one that we did, we did the the all star comedy, uh, the Latin, not the Latin all star, the all star. Palooza. Yeah, I did Latin Palooza. I did uh, Cholo Comedy Slam, but I also we just did uh, the all star comedy show with uh, the all dirty show with uh, you know Vegas, the Vegas show, the Dirty Twelve Thirty. So I just directed that, and that's going to be on screening now as well. So, you know, trying to do shit. Gotta make shit happen, son. Hell yeah! So I'm saying, like I'm, I'm busy and I'm, I'm doing all this shit, but I'm broke as fuck. I don't know how that works. Cause there's homeless people who aren't doing nothing, and they have the same amount of money as I do. That's just not fair. Yeah. Nah, bro. <laughs> no <laughs> roof over their head, though, dog. There's That's a true. Superman Good point. out there with no teeth, bro, That's and no true. costume. <laughs> hey, the, the shut eye right now, broken ribs. <laughs> <laughs> Wishing he can direct. He's dressed up like a sleaze stack now. <laughs> <laughs> he directed his own horror film, dude. That's cool. But that next time I do something, man, you know, hey, you guys are in it. Let's do it. So um, this yeah, screening, where can they get it again? Uh, screening Now, just go online. It's called ScreeningNow.com. And that's it's like a Netflix, but they only have a few titles right now because it's sh- literally, I think it's like a month old, the company. The company is a month or two months old. and uh, But they're going to have a lot of stuff. In, uh, you can see El Matador for two ninety nine. You stream it there. There's a trailer, so you can see the trailer on there as well. And um, and check it out. You know, represent. You're gonna like the movie, or you can. And don't go thinking. Ex- don't expect like a fucking masterpiece, all right? <laughs> don't go there with high hopes, high expectations. You know, think you're gonna see some Steven Spielberg shit. Just know we made it with no money. We made it with like a flashlight and some duct tape, and uh, a bunch of funny guys. So if you go in with that expectation, you're gonna enjoy the movie. 
Just don't go in there thinking, man, you're going to see La La Land. That's what right. <laughs> was on my mind right now. <laughs> I watched the first Just 10 minutes. Just fences, people. <laughs> I got them all. Trenches. <laughs> trenches. <laughs> in the trenches. <laughs> Fucking Joey, though. That's cool. That's cool, man. You you told me that um, the the main actor of the Matador he quit co- quit um, acting. I think so. After yeah, that yeah, movie. yeah. Andrew Abar was his name. He's a really good looking dude. He, he was a good actor, and I don't know, you know, I don't know what happened. But the girl Ada is uh, Doug Williams' wife. Oh damn! Yeah, that's that's the girl, the main girl in the movie is uh, Ada Ada Pla. When I, I remember when we were shooting the movie, you know how you have um, you have visions of grandeur. Yes. Right. I was thinking, yeah, in my head, like, yeah, man, what if. Adam Sandler sees it and likes it. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to play the, 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 the Matador guy. <laughs> dude, you never know, dude. That's the thing. No, we thought it would be funny as his style back then of being like, hey, what are you that guy? <laughs> Guy. Well, Happy Madison would have been flick. perfect. You yeah, know? it actually would have been yeah, perfect. Dude. Some Will Ferrell movie, bro. About it's probably funnier than the shit he's doing now, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah not to be a hater or nothing, but you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Yeah, it's, it's, it sucks because he's, he he has the power in Hollywood to do whatever he wants. And the last few things he's done is not that... Not, well, I take it back. The last thing he, he did that I saw... The Western? The Western was fucking hilarious. That had funny jokes in there. Come on, man. You guys don't like Cobbler? I loved it. I, loved it. <laughs> yeah, no, I liked it. You know why? Because I went in there with low expectations. I went in there with low expectations. I thought it was going to be like Parent or whatever the fuck the other ones he made but it, it was I, I loved it I, I thought it was really funny Very you funny. hear that Sandman <laughs> hire Joey Medina <laughs> that's right I'll direct the film for you yeah man so what happened I think also like Jack Black him and those actors they become parents and now they want to change bro yeah yeah I can't be putting out the that's... same old nasty funny shit I used to put yeah, my kids that's... are watching it yeah like Ice Cube bro no oh, more yeah, he went, hardcore he... shit no no he's, he's mainstream a family now. guy now he's main... but he's still got that pissed off face you know, but he's just pissed off in a nice way, I guess. Man, no matter what you put Ice Cube in, he's the same Ice Cube, right? <laughs> yeah, dude. Ice Cube is a gynecologist, bro. <laughs> Yo, man, let me see those legs. Let's see what's up in this motherfucker. Ice Cube is a psychologist, bro. <laughs> you got problem with your legs. <laughs> Ice Cube being romantic. Let me see them legs. <laughs> <laughs> let me see them toes. <laughs> Well, Ice Cube is, is just, dude, it's, but everybody, again, you got to reinvent yourself. You got to kind of just. That's what we have this podcast bit, for a whole year with no sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of sponsors, La <laughs> Flor de Jalisco. La Flor de Jalisco. Right here. Right there. What's the phone yeah. number? It's 626. <laughs> Wait, turn around. 626 257 3105. That number again is 626 257 3105. In the beautiful city of La Puente, dog. That's right. La yeah. Puente, bad boy. Oh, uh, fool, I hooked up with um, Antonio from Flacos Tacos in Berkeley. The best vegan tacos ever, nice. Flautas, is in uh, oh, Berkeley, Flacos Tacos. Because we're talking about opening up a vegan restaurant together. Out here in L.A.? Uh, here in L.A., right? So this fool gives me a 20-pound, Lisa? He gave me a 10 pounds of, of, of corn dough. Masa. Masa. Corn masa to make flour, corn tortillas, bro. Sorry. I already prepared. I already prepared. All you gotta do is smash the smash the 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 dough and make tortillas, bro. I we made tacos the other day. That shit oh, was did? delicious, bro. Sopes. We made sopes. Oh. We weren't gonna shit to make, bro. We might give some away. <laughs> <laughs> we ran out of shit to make. I'm so full, dog. It's, we have eight pounds left. Bro. Damn. How do you ship it to you guys like that? He, he gets oh, it. okay. Damn. Yeah, that's, a, that's a lot. Good, that's cool, man. dude. That's it's fucking good. awesome. So, Lisa, are you cooking Mexican now? She cooks Mexican, oh, Asian, good for you. Mexican vegan, bro. Damn, she made bro. vegan pozole was bomb. Nice, nice. Sopes. I get, I get my tamales at Costco, dude. They're do- dope. I love those. No, they're good. I think they're real Mexican people. Make <laughs> no, them. of course, dude. But I've heard they were really good, dude. Yeah, I like bro. their pizza and their hot dogs myself, but you yeah. know what I mean. No, really, dude. Costco? <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah no, but, but the frozen they have everything. Dude, dog. You go in there, they, they sell them. It's like a dozen. Dude, the Costco they're brand. Fucking delicious. Are they fat dude. though? They're, yeah, they're, they're, too, they're, big. they're good ones. They look like real ones. It, but, you know, man, I used to buy those tamales. They come in a can, Hormel. Yeah, oh, wow. I've, I've ate them before. There's four of those coming. They're, they're not bad. You ever had them. They're not bad. Dog. It's just tamale with chili in it. <laughs> it's a white trash little party oh, right there. You get hungry, bro. Yeah. You were hungry with Joey, man. I remember it's you chewing raw spaghetti. pasta, bro. Yeah, bro. I liked it. I loved you chewing raw pasta. Don't lie, dog. I was trying to clean my teeth, dog. 
bro, I love the crunch. <laughs> like, I love the crunch. I knew a fool that used to eat them, but he was eating that shit just to lose weight. <laughs> it stops me from munching, dog. Really? Like, Damn. Well, this is true. They say, you know how they say pasta is bad for you because of the starch? If you cook it al uh, dente or whatever, where it's a little, a little harder Hard than it. soft, it, it doesn't have the starch. So that's that's the healthy way to eat it. Al dente. Yeah. Al dente tente. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the healthy way to cook it. You, you won't get the starch. So it's less carbs. Man, you and the chef uh, told me that. You and Alex Rebundo. You and Alex Rebundo. <laughs> you, you and Alex Rebundo used to eat at their comedy condo house. Uh -huh. Like yeah, we're fucking in prison, bro. <laughs> I don't know how many recipes of ramen you can have. That's true. The Jelper. We had we had Jelper ca cuisine. cabinets of fucking top ramen, dude. We learned we we, we were the top ramen chefs. Used to eat fucking ramen with ketchup, bro. Yeah, like, dope it up everything. with like mayonnaise Sofapio, or something. Make it all yeah. fettuccine style. Yeah, it's all. Who took the crushed peppers? <laughs> I no, put the little packet. Because oh, yeah, it comes only with that packet, so you got to fucking add shit to it, man. Damn, you know? dog. And then that, that's before the 99 cent store. Fuck now. Forget it. You can go crazy with that Jeremy shit. Jeremy Dina used to always have that fake Apple Jack cereal, Apple Devils. <laughs> Apple Devils. <laughs> Manzana Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> Dick. You would go in the house, and there was one section just for Alec Ramundo, bro. <laughs> he was in the movie, too. Yeah, he was in the film. Uh, that, dude, Paul Rodriguez was in there. Played an angel. Yeah, he played he played his the fa his his father's angel, and then Paul Rodriguez played Alex playing the angel. Like he just he he even says it in the film. Goes, yeah, I'm just here to do a, a director a favor. And the funny thing is this: <laughs> the most expensive day of shooting for uh, El Matador was that film because I mean that that sh that scene with Paul Rodriguez because I had to rent the studio because we hung midgets from ropes. And they were the, the midgets. Brad Williams and um, Tiny Kim, right? No, uh, Tanya. Tanya, Tanya, Tanya Lee was one of them. Tanya, Tanya Lee, Lee. Yeah. that's her name. And, we, her and name they were like name. little, they were dressed as angels, but you could see the rope. Like the ropes were there, <laughs> everything, like thick ropes. And so Paul, I told Paul, I said, listen, I don't know where I'm going to shoot this at. Maybe like in a garage or something. He was like, no, nah, not here. And he gave me $2,000 to rent the studio. And the fucker still came late, but it doesn't matter. He paid for it, so what do you do? Yeah, what do you but, do, dog? He, yeah, so he paid for the studio and the lights to shoot that scene, you know. And and, and it's funny because that scene, the, the the film got all scratched and shit, and I had to fucking fix it. It was, it was it was it was hard, man. It was hard, but it's funny watching fucking. And one of the midgets was in a was in a wheelchair, so she's dressed like an angel. A little wheelchair. But she's in a, an electric <laughs> wheelchair going around Paul like this in a circle. It's fucking so it's so bad, but yet so good. It is it is my Sharknado. That's what it is. It's my Sharknado. So if you like that kind of shit, watch this movie. On screeningnow.com. <laughs> How long did the little people hang for? They hung for a while, dude. They were there God for like they were damn, there for like four dude. hours hanging from that. Are rope. you serious? Yeah. In a harness right there all? Yeah, yeah. Because there was a because I had to pay a guy to put them up, and then I couldn't afford to keep them the whole time. So we 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 had to leave them there until we were ready to finish, and then we took we brought them down. Okay. Oh, dude, you're fucking stretching that dollar, dog. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. Should have been a producer, you know? Well, I did. I produced the shit. That's there you the go. thing. I never wanted to be a producer, but then at the end of El Matador, when I'm doing the credits, I'm going, holy fuck, I produced this. Like, I actually, I go, oh, so that's what a producer does, you know? Like, I didn't know. I'm like, I don't want to be a producer. I didn't know what a fucking producer was. I just go, okay, I'm going to direct this. But then but basically what a producer does is directs the film before, you know, before you direct. That's all you do, you, just, you know. And my style of directing is like I direct like a producer and I produce like a director. So, so when I film, it's it's all everything's connected, everything flows well. You know what I mean? Or you just act like a producer? <laughs> <laughs> right there with uh, sunglasses and a cigar. Yeah. All right, let's move around. Let's do some shit right here. Come on, we're gonna work touch. in this town again for free. <laughs> but uh, yeah, dude, but it was fun making it, man. Who was your inspiration that you? Because I know that you didn't know. Did you wake up one day? I want to be a filmmaker, or, or something that eventually you just jumped into. It's somebody you'll ne you 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 don't know who it is. Rick. Morris Charnow. Morris Charnow was my fifth grade teacher, and God what happened damn, in fifth grade was this: he had a eight millimeter film of kids in the class the year before doing a Batman sketch, like, and there was no sound; it was just film. And I remember he played it. He played it on the screen, and like I remember the the person dressed up as Batman had like a Halloween Batman thing, and his bat rope was a, a, a jump rope. And I remember watching that. I swear to God, my, I, from what I remember, like my jaw dropped. I'm like, I'm like, I want to do that. I want to make a movie. This is amazing. So in seventh grade, two years and later, Matador was born. Yeah, uh, no, in seventh <laughs> grade, I bought. Uh, from a from another teacher in my junior high school, I bought a stolen film camera, a projector, and a screen. 
from Board of Education and for 50 bucks. And I made a little King Kong movie like that. And it, and it's funny because I had my, I had my brother a wear... A little King Kong movie. Yeah, a little teddy bear hanging from my penis. No, the reason I made the King Kong movie was because I had a gorilla mask. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to make a... Gorilla. So I had my, my, my brother wear the gorilla mask. I wore, he, had a, he wore a, a, a fake fur coat and he had gorilla hands, right? But it was funny, and then, and then he picked up this dollhouse. Yeah, he picks up this dollhouse, and then as soon as he picks it up, all the like furniture on it falls on his face because you know how it's only got one side. And then, and then you can see his wrist. <laughs> like, there's a gorilla hands. There's Is that a, a gorilla? Yeah. And then, and then I had a, I had a ship, like a model ship. I put it in the bathtub, and I shot that. Fucking then shot I sh- made away. Yeah. Then I shot my. Uh, shot NATO then I shot, I shot a, a video, a shot of my sister going, "Oh my God, here's King Kong." And then I cut to a Barbie doll with her hand up like that and, and King Kong with the wrist you can see the wrist grabbed <laughs> grabs the, I did like a whole King Kong movie for three because back then those eight millimeter films were three minutes and ten seconds long wow dude so I had a, and then you time it you see it on the camera and you just keep shooting because there's no editing you edit on the camera you just keep shooting it in, like in the order it's supposed to be in and that was the first thing I ever directed in seventh grade and I thought that was the shit. But then I got into boxing, deep into boxing. So my filmmaking, you know, took, took you know, it, it went on the back burner. But um, I always loved filmmaking after that. And it was Morris Channel. So matter of fact, true story. When I, when I made El Matador, I was so proud that I made a fucking movie, even though it was that movie. I, I was so proud that I found... Uh, my teacher Morris Charnow and I sent him a, a VHS of El Matador and he was, he was you're proud kidding of me. me. And no, and I and, he, and I told him I go <laughs> return to sender. I go, <laughs> I go, you inspired me to do this, man. And he was, you know, he oh, was sorry. Cool. Did and you know you recorded over the Zapruder <laughs> film? Monkey <laughs> 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 Joey, God, that's awesome though, dude. Yeah, so you're the person seriously. that inspired you're me. Still amazed to all the equipment now. <laughs> <laughs> They're still looking for you. There's a warrant out for your arrest. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I bought stolen equipment. But that's another teacher I you bought. You rascal. Stolen equipment from a teacher. Well, stole it from the school. Because <laughs> <laughs> what happened was... It was, was an inside job. Yeah, I was, I was telling him. ABR guys. He was, he was actually my shop teacher. And I told him, I said, yeah, I want to make a movie. Me too. Eh? He, goes, he, goes, he goes, look, he goes, he goes, for $50, I'll get you a camera. I got the key to the auditorium, man. You want to buy some naked pictures of my mom, dog? <laughs> the camera and, and a screen. It came with a stand. Like, you pull the screen down or up or something like that. <sighs> and and it was, I had the projector. I had the whole thing. I had all three pieces. The camera. Fuck, the shit was heavy. Huh? Dude, Friday Night Movies, dog. Huh? Yeah. So I had a bar for 50 <laughs> bucks, man. And just... it was funny because they all said Board of Education on it. <laughs> That was my Let's weightlifting belt, a property of Bally's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, but, hey, this fool. Hey, look at me now. Fucking man, still promoting El Matador. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a fucking staple, dog. That's right. Two ninety nine. What is the teacher? Now. The teacher was proud of you, though? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I we stayed in contact a little bit after that, and then not... Like maybe about a year later, I, uh, I I headlined Caroline's in New York and invited him. So he actually got to see me do stand-up oh, as fuck well. Oh, yeah, the whole package. And I'm like, dude, this is my fifth grade teacher. He was the coolest teacher on the fucking earth, man. I, l- I love that guy. Morris Charnow. I don't know. I have, I lost contact with him. But. Did he yell out, Joey, do the King Tut. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the King Kong movie you did? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know where that is. Fucking man. I want to find that. I want to find that. Cause that was, bitching, dude. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was great. It was funny. I still remember making it. It was fucking. We had I fake guess. soldiers, like army soldiers. <laughs> like. It was just so bad. It was just so bad. I'm dying at your little sister pointing me. Yeah, yeah. And then, we, and then I cut to a Barbie King doll. Kong! Then I, I cut Vita, dog. <laughs> 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 right, there, right? They, uh, so you see this little Puerto Rican girl pointing, right? Then I cut to a white Barbie doll with blonde hair. <laughs> what they're pointing on. I'm going to go out at night, papa. <laughs> Remember, um, I don't know if, if it was your movie or you were directing or you were starring in a movie. You call me up, hey, man, I'm shooting this movie. And I met you at some big-ass park in a valley. And some guy was shooting a movie in the park. Oh, that was El Matador. And there was like a little doll, a little doll laying on the floor on the, on the freeway, on the streets. Oh, wow. I don't know. I don't remember that. Because I remember shooting in a park in the valley in, for El Matador, and I had the midgets on that scene, too. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember. I got I to gotta look. But, yeah, dude, it... You know, that's that's how it's filmmaking. That's like any any art does. You get better is just by doing it more and more and more. And you and, you know when I shoot my own stuff, I don't I don't mind fucking up because it's my shit. You know, but if somebody hires me to sh- do something, a music video or something, I'm really really careful because it's their money. You know right. what I mean? But um, but then you know the the more I, I shoot, man, I, I I only shoot when I know it's gonna be right. I don't fuck around. Like, some people, I got a lot of friends now, you know, that be like, hey hey hey, I got this sketch idea. Hey, hey, and I'm always open. Like I'm like, I'll help you out. 
because you're my friend. But then you don't hear back from them anymore. You know what I mean? They're like, I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna chase you to do your fucking idea. Right, you gotta chase it, me. Yeah, if you want, if you, I'll do it. I'm there for you. But you know, if it, if I gotta use all my equipment, a lot of equipment, then you gotta bring me help. I ain't gonna be p- packing all this shit, picking up all this shit because I keep on. I have so much shit. I have it in storage. Like I'm not gonna go up there and fucking load up a fucking van with all my shit by myself and load it back just to do you a little fucking favor. You gotta help me, help you, and then I'll help you out that way. You know, but that's the way I am because you know, I mean. Sometimes that's all you got is friends. And sometimes I remember when I had no equipment and I wanted to do something, it was hard to beg for somebody, hey, man, could you help me out with this? Could you help me out with that? So now when, when I have a friend that needs something, I'm totally down. But as long as I can do it and it's not crazy and they have to pay for everything, I don't pay for it, you know what I mean? But I'll, my, I lend my talent and my equipment, and I'm like, let's do this. And your benevolence. Yes, and let's make this motherfucker happen. <laughs> when you man. shot um, Cholo Slam, that was your, your equipment too? No, that we rented. Well, actually, it was a production company that I sold the show to. It was their equipment. Where, is, where can people watch Cholo Slam? Cholo Slam, I think it's on Hulu. Um, you can get it there. Um, Who's in it? Uh, on there is uh, Emilio Rivera. Brought him back out of retirement. For the <laughs> stand-up? Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Martin Moreno's in it. Um, How do you do? Oh, Benny Mena. Martin did all right. You know? Um, you know uh, what? Hey! <laughs> the it's best, set, the best set was actually, I think, uh, Ben was, Mena, right? No, no, the best set was um, uh, Emilio. Emilio destroyed it. Well, he's killed. Yeah, it, and man. and then Gilbert Escavel killed it too. Oh hell, yeah, so Gilbert's he was, funny. He, oh, and and DJ Cooch did it. He DJ Cooch killed it. That that was that was really good, and um, it, and it was fun making it, man. And I made it because somebody somebody wanted me to make that show. So, I so I pitched the idea, and all the literally all the money they gave me to make that thing i put on screen i didn't pay myself anything just to make it look good yeah because it, to make it look as good as i could and there was mistakes that happened if i could go back trust me i'll make i'll do things differently like the, the, there was a i had a intern that was supposed to do the put like a, a, a video on the screen every time a comic went up and once the show started the fucker just forgot and i was stuck with that fucking image that, that i had on which was a temporary image throughout the whole show so i, I would do that different i would do a lot of things different and um you would you know, pay yourself <laughs> and I would pay myself too. I'd definitely pay myself because I didn't make a fuck. I worked my ass off. Me, I would have paid myself somehow, man. Yeah, me and my girlfriend at the time worked Some our hairness. ass off on that. We worked our ass off on that. We really did. She worked. She worked just as hard as me, if not more. And uh, Liz Lohoff, give her a big shout out because she, she broke her ass on that, and uh, I couldn't have done it without her. And um, but but it was I, I felt really good when I did it because I'm like I did that with fourteen thousand dollars. That's it, fourteen thousand dollars. I had an, I had a fucking venue with two thousand people in it. I had you know four or five cameras. I had crew, and to give you the uh, to to show you the big difference was I did Latin Palooza was a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow! So that's the difference. I did I did a hundred and fifty thousand dollar job with fourteen thousand dollars, and that God was damn, extremely man. extremely difficult. The 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 um, million dollar theater you had to rent it. Oh uh, yeah, we had to rent it. Oh wow, I thought it would be more expensive to rent. Yeah. No, it, that cost I think it was three grand to rent that. See, that's three thousand dollars, yeah, to rent that. That's and they came cheese. with their shitty security, with, with fucking old ladies and old. And it was fucking. They were old. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they were like, there was, there, there's like fucking two thousand cholos in the audience. Oh, they had they the flashlight. These, yeah, these old ladies and these old men. There, they're like, yeah, they weren't doing any security at all, you know. And then we had uh, 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 fuck, who we, we had Frankie J was there. We had uh, Mr. Capone. You know, we had it was a good show, man. It, yeah, it was a, it was a good show. It really was a good show. The talent was was good. And the show in the show. Yeah, there was a, these two girls that came up. They had, they were the dancers. So we had these two girls go up there. Like she, they would walk up. The actors, Noel G was in it. You know, we, we they walked them up, but it was good, man. Again, it was a learning experience. You know, of every I think every filmmaker and and I think I saw Martin Scorsese say this. They, if they could all do every project they had over again, they would do it differently. They would do something that they learned. They were like, man, I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. And that's the truth. You know, it's, it's, it's never uh, ever perfect. To other people, it may be perfect, but to you, you're like, fuck, I, I fucked up here or I messed up here. Or, I'll, I'll see this or I'll, you know, you can see a reflection off a camera or uh, of the lighting or something. Nobody else will see it, but you know it's there. And that's like, fuck, next time I won't, I'll make sure I'll do this. I'll make sure I'll do that. And, you know, shooting the sitcom that I just shot. I learned a lot. I learned because I did that again all by myself. I made a, uh, I made like a half a million dollar looking sitcom for 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 four thousand dollars, and that was fucking very difficult to do. But again, it all comes from experience, right? Yeah, and it just a lot of planning. It's all planning. What would you, what would you tell um, any young person listening that wants to get into film? Fucking just start shooting, man. Grab your fucking go phone. Go to film. No, go to New go York to, Film School. No, no, don't waste the, waste the money. Yeah, yeah. Make take that money and film something. 
Learn, get people who know what they're doing and learn from them. And YouTube, I, I'll be editing right now and, I'll, and I'll, I'll be doing something. I'm like, fuck, I don't know how to do this. I go on YouTube and I find out how to do it. And there's some other motherfucker that just did it. And I just, I'm like, all right, I'll do that. I'll learn how to, that's how I learned to edit myself. Nobody taught me how to edit. I learned at so Starbucks YouTuber. on YouTube wow. how to edit. I learned how to make rabbit forts on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, go, I Googled how can I make my rabbit a fort. <laughs> And I, the guy told me, the lady in Japan told me how to make a fort. See, there you go, man. It's true. You can learn anything, bro. Anything on fucking YouTube. And it's just, uh, and then you learn different angles, different ways to do it. You know, when I did El Matador, there's special effects in it. Not El Matador, I'm sorry. Uh, missing. Where, you know, my grandma grandma's head gets smashed in with a bat and blood everywhere. A woman, a girl gets hit by a car and she flies off. All that shit I learned on how to do, how to do on YouTube. You know, and, uh, and that was it. How'd you do that? How do you come out? It's all it's great. It looks great. It's composites. It's just composites. It's like it's the same composites. trick as it's the same thing like you do in Photoshop, except you're doing it with moving pictures instead of a. Uh, so you know. So for instance, I okay, like the grandma's laying there, right? You see her laying down, and her head's there. So I shoot that. Then I shoot. Um, I put an X where her head is, right? And I don't move the camera. The trick is you don't move the camera. Then I put a watermelon there with a wig, like the grandma's hair, the white hair, with guts and blood in it, smash that with a bat. And then you take those two images, because the camera never moves, they, they just go right on top of each other. And then you rotoscope shit around it. So when the, you see the bat coming down, you start erasing grandma's face. And you start putting blood there, and then you'll see it. And, and then when, when you let it go, when you, you let it render, boom, grandma gets her head smashed in. That's what it looks like. That's, that's the trick. That's just... And that's a special effects trick? Yeah, special effects. And it's a very simple special effects trick. Anybody could do it. How can you Man. shoot somebody not funny and make them funny? Oh, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. You got to you gotta put... You, gotta, you, can't, you can't do that right away. It's impossible. You no, you know, no, you know how you do it? You put a laugh track on there. That's what you do. <laughs> and that's what a lot of people's specials have, dude. I've seen... Really, I've, dude? Yeah, I've seen people's specials without the laugh track and... And you got to sweeten it up. You just got to sweeten it up. Because sometimes it's not, maybe the joke was good, but just the audience didn't feel it at that second. And if you're going to put something out there on the screen, you can't have that. You can't have a, you got to bring up the laughter. You got to make that laughter rich. You know what I mean? And that's, and that's Damn, what you can I do. didn't know that shit. Yeah, yeah. I know, man. Like, I'm, I'm, when I was watching, when, when I shot Last Comic Standing, um, they had to use my laugh from Last Comic Standing and put them on Kathy Griffin's set. Really? She bombed. Oh, wow. There you go. There you go. It's true. That's why everything gets... Because I watched her, bro. I didn't see the, I didn't yeah, hear the dude. laughs. That's tripping then me I, Then I watched her do her set. Then I heard, Felipe! <laughs> that's not Felipe. <laughs> no, but that's, I'm that's making why, that up, though, buddy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, that's why all everything gets recorded separately. When you shoot a special, comedy special... The audience's microphones, it's com they're, compl they're separate. So now separate you tracks. Yeah, so you have these tracks separate that you can fuck with, play with, and put everywhere you want. One trick what you do is to make it better. You, d you don't make them louder. You don't bring the volume up because that sounds weird. What you do is you double, you, you double track them. So you take that same track. You layer it. You, la you make a copy of the same track. You layer it on top of it. And then it has a natural loudness that doesn't sound like you put the volume up. It just sounds like there's double the people there. More powerful, Rosa. Yeah. Remember, Frank Manzano used to have a joke, and then and then that joke would bomb <laughs> in the audience. Right now, there are people on the other side of the world laughing their ass off. And they don't know why. I'm the reason. <laughs> 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 What's up, fool? Any shows coming up? Uh, fuck, I don't know what I got up. Coming up, I got in uh, April. In April, I'm gonna be in. Uh, no, I'm sorry. In March, I'm gonna be in in Reno. I'll be at the Laugh Factory Reno. And in July, I know I'm doing the. Oh, in April, I'm doing Flappers in Burbank. In July, I'm doing the Tropicana in Vegas. And just go to joymedina.com. You can see all the other shit I'm doing. This Saturday, people, I'll be at the Novo in downtown LA, January 21st. Next week, Atlanta, Georgia, January 27th through the 29th at the Punchline. And um, regardless of what Donald Trump said about that guy Lewis, this neighborhood is where that guy Lewis is from, is Buckingham. And let me tell you, man, that's a rich ass neighborhood. I don't know what Donald Trump is talking about. From Buckhead. But, uh, Buckhead, Atlanta, it's a lot of people with money there. Also, February 11th, no, February, I'll be at the. Uh, what is there? At, with, I'll be with Mike Epps in the Orlando, Cincinnati. 
Yeah, I'll be with Mike Epps. Oh, in Orlando? In C Orlando, Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Raleigh, North Carolina, Dallas, Chicago. And also I'll be in Pleasanton, California at Tommy T's and San Antonio Improv River Center. We're going to be at... Well, the show today, we ain't going to know because it's Friday, but, you know, Saturday. And then... Um, this show Friday. No show, you have a show Friday? Uh, Friday, I'm going to be at... Dude, I'm going to be... It's not the comedy pop-up. Right there in Echo Park. What the fuck? Comedy wash-up. <laughs> I'll be in Rosemead tonight, but, I mean, that's last week. Where so. can they find you at Joy Medina? Go to joymedina.com. You go to my Twitter, which is Joey Medina Comic. My Instagram is Joey Medina Comic. And my Facebook is Joy Medina Fan Page. Shout out to David Rodriguez for the shirts from his family's bakery in La Puente, La Florida, Jalisco. Also, thank you everybody who has been leaving comments on iTunes. Keep coming with those comments. Uh, please review our show on SoundCloud. Give us a four stars. Give us four stars on iTunes. Um, share the podcast with all your friends. That's Let right. them know what's up, food podcast. Check out Joy Medina's movie, El Matador, on screeners.com. Screeningnow.com. Screeningnow.com. Any Yam Mans coming up? We have one coming out this weekend, dude. Who you got? Ben Gonzalez. Ben comedian. Gonzalez. Who's that fool? From San Diego? No, he's from L.A. Does that West Side Comedy Show. Goonie Show. All the dude right. with the beard. He's cool. I'm sorry, with Benji from over there. In, um... Oh, that fool's from San Diego. Yeah, Benji. Benji, what was his last name? Frog's friend. Right? Oh, whatever. <laughs> He's all sad or another San Diego Chargers left. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people are. We're sad they're coming here, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, back. I thought that for the only, you know, it's funny. Um, the only person that can block the Raiders from going to Las Vegas is the city of San Diego. How's that? Because they have a voting right. They could vote on it still because the Chargers, even though they left to LA, they still have a vote as the Chargers. Well, if San Diego's pissed enough, why don't they do it? Yeah, so San Diego could get the Raiders if they're smart. If they're smart. Two hours is better But than still, four. why would they get the Raiders and give them a new stadium when they don't want to give it to the Chargers? Yeah, that's true. What's up with that, dude? I don't know, man. Joy Medina, build them a stadium. <laughs> right. What's up, like fool? Joy Medina right here. What's up? Balls of steel. <laughs> I do have balls of steel. The heirloom. Well, you go toilet right here. Damn it. Good night, everybody. Thank you for listening. What's up, fool?